All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about a couple different properties that we have learned previously and how they're going to apply with us this year in geometry. By the end of this video, we should be able to use properties from algebra and use those properties of congruence. So please have out your guide and notes and let's begin. So let's talk about a couple different properties of equality. So we have the addition property. So if x is equal to 7, then x plus 3 is equal to 10. Or if ab is equal to 4 and bc is equal to 2, then ab plus bc is equal to 4 plus 2. We have the subtraction property, which is if x is equal to 10, then x minus 3 is equal to 7. Also, if the measure of angle A plus 20 is equal to 60, then the measure of angle A is equal to 40. We have the multiplication property. If x is equal to 2, then 2x is equal to 4. Also, if half of AC is equal to AB, then AC is equal to 2AB. We have the division property. If 2x is equal to 4, then x is equal to 2. And if 2 times the measure of angle A is 40, then the measure of angle A is equal to 20. Lastly, we have the substitution property. So if x is equal to 3 and x plus y is equal to 7, then 3 plus y is equal to 7. And if measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is going to be equal to 90. So these are a couple of different properties that we have learned previously, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and substitution. And on the right-hand side are a couple of different examples of how we might see it this year within geometry. So with that, please work on problems one through five on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So notice that the properties of equality listed above that we just went through are used only on numbers and variables. Some properties used in geometry apply to both equality and congruence. So equality is going to be working with numbers, variables, lengths, and angle measures. Congruence is all about segments, angles, and polygons. So we have what's called the reflexive property. If DE is equal to DE, we also have the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 1. Notice how these are lengths and angle measures. DE means the length of segment DE. Measure of angle 1 is, well, the measure of angle 1. But on congruence, we're talking about the actual shape itself. So segment DE is congruent to segment DE. Likewise, angle 1 is congruent to angle 1. We're going to be using this re reflexive property a lot this year when we get to proofs. Symmetric property. If the length of DE is equal to the length of AB, then the length of AB is equal to the length of DE. And if the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, well, then the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 1. That's the equality. But now let's talk about congruence. And again, we're talking about the shapes here. If segment DE is congruent to segment AB, then segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, well, then angle 2 is congruent to angle 1. We also have the transitive property. So if we're talking about equality, we have if the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3, then the measure of angle 1 is going to be equal to the measure of angle 3. And likewise for congruence, if the segment AB is congruent to segment CD and segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment EF. We don't normally use the transitive property a lot this year. I find that students like to say and claim it, but it has to be in this particular order. So normally, whenever we think about using the transitive property, we get stumbled a bit, and that's fine. And substitution is going to be our best friend when we eventually start talking about that. So in this example, we are asked to complete the proof by supplying the missing statements and the reasons. So on the left-hand side, we're given that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Again, notice how it's equal because we're talking about measurements. We're not talking about the shape. We're talking about the actual numerical value. And we want to prove that the measure of angle DEG is equal to the measure of angle HEF. And notice when we're trying to prove it here, we're not talking about numbers. We're talking about the actual um, DEG, right? We don't say angle 2 because angle 2 is completely different. 
So whenever we're naming and we have multiple vertices, we always want to use letters if we can. But fortunately, measure of angle one, measure of angle two, measure of angle three, we are given those three smaller angles. So there is a little bit of subtlety that we want to be aware of, of what we're seeing here. So the first thing we're always going to state is our given. We're given the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. Here is where the reflexive property is going to come into play. We're going to state the reflexive property by saying the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle two. We're then going to use the addition property of equality. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two. From here, we're going to use our favorite, the angle addition postulate. Oh, too far. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. We have the measure of angle DEG is equal to the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. And likewise, the measure of angle HEF is equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two. And lastly, but not least, we can use the substitution property. And we can finally state that measure of angle DEG is equal to the measure of angle HEF. And again, that's by the substitution property. I'm not going to be too finicky on whether we're using the equality, congruence. Just understand that there is a difference and there are going to be special times where we have to state of equality and congruence, but we will talk about that a bit later. Great job today, folks. With this in mind, please work on problems six through eight on the guide and notes. Please let me know if you have any questions. Keep making yourself proud. And I'll talk to you soon.